Hello, my study buddies, my painting buddies, my workmates, and of course, my procrastinators. Welcome back to the studio. Whatever it is that you're up to, let's keep each other focused and accountable. And as always, let's keep each other company for the next hour. And uh, yeah, let us know what you're up to down below in the comments, and let's just get started. So today I'm going to be painting a kind of sunset scene. I find that when I'm not really sure what to paint, it's kind of a good go-to. It's, good, it's a good warm-up. It kind of gets me into the painting mood and I really wasn't sure what I wanted to do today. I have a feeling I'll finish this before um, the end of the hour and in that case I do have another reference up ready to go. It's just a similar kind of thing. It's also a great way to fill um, a couple of sketchbook pages, which as you know, I really need to do at the moment because um, if you haven't seen my last couple of videos, I am in the middle of a challenge that I set myself to fill all of my unfinished sketchbooks by the end of the year. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get back to that. <laughs> but for now, let's just um, have a catch up on what we talked about last time. So last time, I was feeling kind of insecure in my work um, and I'm still not like fully sure of what I'm doing uh, but the more negative side of those feelings has definitely um, subsided a bit. I am feeling a lot more like hopeful and um, it's really always encouraging to hear back from you guys and know that you feel similar things um, and I always end up apologizing when I have those more like not negative, but, you know, more, um, you know, honest videos because, um, while most people obviously don't mind and appreciate it, I know that some people just want to come here and see me make art. Um, and I do occasionally get comments along those lines, but I will say that, um, I like being honest. I like sharing the highs and lows of this. Um, I kind of consider this not just, an art channel but like an artist channel this isn't just about the pictures I make it's about the stuff behind it and the realities of trying to make this your job and make a living out of it um I don't think it would be fair to just show the good side because sometimes you have doubts and sometimes you're not sure 100 percent what you're doing um and also there's really nothing wrong with that there's really nothing wrong with not knowing what you're doing and not feeling like you're doing your best work I think it's a natural thing and it's just part of growing in any kind of creative endeavor that you do. I don't think you can ever be completely complacent because um, I'm not sure what you really get out of that. But as I said, I am feeling a lot more confident and I do think part of all this sketchbook work has helped me loosen up a bit just kind of do stuff for the sake of doing it and see where I end up and even just stuff like this um isn't necessarily the art that I want to be making but it's art and it's better than not making anything if anything else it's more like the kind of medita meditative side of art and I wasn't actually going to do like a real-time talky video today I was going to do a voiceover on this one because it just feels like one of those days um I wasn't I didn't I was ready to film this video over the weekend but um I realized that filming over the weekend isn't ideal just because everyone's out and about and it's really noisy so I waited till Monday and for whatever reason today is like the noisiest Monday ever people are honking their horns there's a dog outside that keeps barking and whining and um, like just people keep stopping outside the flat and having a chat outside. So, um, yeah, I'm hoping that things have kind of quieted down and it's going to be a decent filming day. I don't want to jinx myself. Um, and I'm like, I'm a bit tired today. I don't know. I'm, I feel like I'll get into it, but it didn't feel like an ideal day for painting. Thierry's also just on one today for some reason, running around and being a bit of a nightmare. So... I'm hoping that the quality of this video is all right. Um, yeah, I decided that I would just go ahead and film regardless because I wanted to get this video video done. I wanted to talk about some stuff that I've been kind of keeping notes on um, and have a good catch up. Um kind of going more watery with this paint and it's not really intentional but 
but I'm not 100% certain on the colours here. The paint I'm using is Holbein Gouache, by the way, um, and when I did my 30 landscapes in a week video, I think, this is the colour palette that I kind of landed on throughout that week of experimenting with landscape paintings um, that just works. So it's like a, let's see, a permanent yellow, cerulean blue, um, ultramarine blue, yellow ochre, jet black, opera, which is that lovely bright pink, and white I think are the colours and a sap green I don't know why I put the sap green out because I'm not going to use that I don't think but I think that was just like a, a habit thing but yeah these having like a go-to palette for landscapes has really helped me although as I said before I would like to branch out with the colours that I use in my work like this is my basic um more true to life kind of palette if not a bit more a bit more bright um, not really getting the blend there that I want, but maybe that's something to just come back to. But yeah, as I said, if nothing else, painting a nice sunset is just lovely and therapeutic and calming. And I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, I don't want these videos to just be about the art. I just want it to be us hanging out and whatever I'm making to be kind of secondary to that. Um, because it's, if I wanted to make my best work, I wouldn't be like talking while I'm doing it. I would be completely focused. So I do kind of reserve easier things to paint on these videos. Because um, I've kind of given up on trying to make my best work while I'm talking and filming. It just doesn't work out like that. Even if I'm not talking and just filming, it's really hard to work around the camera and work in a way that's more natural okay I think I think I need to stop messing around with that now I don't know how much more I can how much more I can add maybe see if I can get some clouds in there a kind of suggestion of clouds I do think I think I've gone in too wet, so I might just leave that for a little bit and come back to it. And in the meantime, I'll work on some of what's going on in the foreground. I might have brought the sky down too far as well. Uh, I'll just stick a, I'll stick a horizon in there just to be my guide. And then we can work from that. But thank you guys so much for your response to my uh, 30 ways to fill a sketchbook video. Um, it was really lovely to see how excited people were about it, how into it people were. Um, definitely one of my favourite videos that I've made this year probably. Um, just felt just felt right and I was really happy with how it came out. Um, and so I was really happy with the response as well. So in terms of how I'm getting on with filling all my sketchbooks, um, I'll be honest, I haven't done much since that video. It actually took two, two days, two whole days to edit that video. Um, so not a lot of drawing got done over those couple of days. And then, um, yeah, like I said, in that video, I had a lot of, a lot of life to catch up on. Um, and I'm just, I'm just easing my way back into it now. I'm very behind on my goal for um, 45 pages a week to finish all my sketchbooks by the end of the year, but I'm not putting too much pressure on myself because um, I think if I did that, it's just it's just not going to happen and I don't want to burn out. I don't want to, you know, there's no point in doing too much and then going into the new year just resenting my art and I still really have the goal of learning something from all this and really gaining something from it at least um so yeah i'm not gonna i'm not gonna rush through it i'm just gonna see what i end up with and and when and when i end up with it now i thought this was going to be really easy but i think i think i'm a bit rusty um 
I'm just, I don't know, my, my mojo is off today. Um, so I'm glad, I'm actually glad I, I went with something a bit simpler for my painting today because I don't know it's a good it's a good warm-up for when you're not feeling on your best game which I certainly am not right now I honestly just wanted to make this video as an excuse to come and have a chat And I can see it, I can see it coming together at the end. They always do, she says, hopefully. So other than the sketchbook stuff to catch up on, I am, um, what have I been up to? I haven't been drinking all month. Um, Ozzy and I decided for the month of November we would have no alcohol and I've wanted to do that for a while. Um, no like particular reason, not even like just to see if I could do it because I knew I could, I just wanted to do it and it was hard, it was definitely a challenge, um, more so just because it's such a habit, it's so ingrained especially um, we had some tough weeks during November, like work-wise. Obviously, I was working on um, that 30 ways for the sketchbook video, which was a lot of work, a lot of, like, working into the night. And normally, when I'm working into the night like that, I can kind of justify it by knowing that I'm going to settle down afterwards and make myself a nice meal and then just sit down and unwind with a glass of wine. Um, but I couldn't do that. And then Ozzy at the same time was working so much, so, so much. Like he had one of his craziest work weeks, um, like up at five in the morning, he wouldn't be home till about 12 o'clock at night. And he was, he was putting in a lot of work because he was working towards something. And um, by the end of that week, um, found out that what he was working towards wasn't gonna happen, which was really devastating. And it just felt like a major blow. And it was the kind of like, Friday evening in fact it was like Friday night after this long long week we'd both had such long weeks and it's like that's the kind of time where you just want a cold beer or something to to settle down with but um that was kind of the point of not drinking really to get out of that habit of having that to lean on and fall back on um so yeah by the last I mean it was hard it was hard for the first three weeks if I'm being completely honest and I didn't go out at all really last month um which I know would have been an extra challenge I really didn't even like trust myself to go out and socialize because that's when it would get really difficult um but generally just staying at home it was more the habit side of just wanting a glass of wine here and there or watching the football and wanting a beer but um yeah I got through it and by the last week I was over it like I didn't have any real want or need for alcohol at all um so yesterday was the first of december and just to kind of commemorate getting through it we had a glass of wine but i honestly could have done without it and um i'm having quite a quite a social week this week for me but i would like to i don't know just be more mindful of if i need to be drinking or not and how much i'm drinking and you know what? Non-alcoholic beer is actually all right. Um, that's one thing I learned last last month. Um, I really have no idea what I'm doing. I'm really just like messing around. I don't really think this is going to turn out great, but it's nice to just sit and paint and have a chat. I, I don't know. I was just really looking forward to this. And I'm, I don't know if you can hear that in the background. That is the bins being done. Um, I always forget that Monday also isn't a great day for filming because it's bin day. But yeah, hopefully it isn't too distracting. Maybe you can't hear it at all. So now that we are in December, things are starting to get festive. As I said, I haven't been out a lot, so I can't say. But my mum said that, you know, I think people are really getting into it. All the decorations are out. I can see the people that live across from me. They've got decorations in their windows. Um, and I'm curious to know when you guys think it's okay to start decorating. Um, 
I know a few of my friends have started. They started in November. Um, when I lived with my mum, it was always um, the 12th the 12 days of Christmas like that's what she would wait for uh, we'd always decorate 12 days before Christmas and then on New Year's Day that's when that's when everything came down um, and I tried to get in the Christmas spirit yesterday when it turned when it was the 1st of December I thought okay it's acceptable at least for me to whip my Christmas playlist out because I just I love Christmas music but I listened to like two songs and I was just like nah nah it's not time I'm not ready um there's like a, a sad, nostalgic feeling about Christmas music and I wasn't, I wasn't quite ready for it. Um, yeah, and I don't plan on decorating for at least a couple of weeks, maybe. Um, maybe end of next week. I don't have a huge amount of decorating to do anyway, but I don't know. I'm, I'm looking forward to getting into that like festive spirit, that, that feeling of togetherness. I, I do love, I do love this time of year. One thing I do want to get sorted as soon as possible is my shopping. I don't want to do, I'm like, I'm not a huge Christmas shopper. Like I don't, I buy gifts for maybe, I don't know, three, four, five people in my life and that's it. Um, and I'm also a lot more mindful this year of stuff. I think this year has been a real year of rethinking consumerism and, um, I don't know, just, just things, materialism. Um, so that's kind of made gift buying a bit more difficult because in the back of my mind, I'm like, is this just, is this just another thing for someone's house? Um, is this just another, I don't know, just a bit of clutter. Um, but then that means buying something really meaningful or making something and like make some things. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a struggle to find a, a good balance uh but yeah i do oh God, i really want to get my christmas shopping done like today um but we'll see yeah i'm basically just getting something for my parents my sister ozzy ozzy's parents and a couple of friends so i don't have a huge amount to worry about but normally i have a good idea um because i love getting gifts for people especially when i know exactly what i'm going to get them but not, I'm not really sure this time around. I've got a couple of couple of ideas, but like for side presents, like the extra presents, but not for the main thing. today but I can't really get the consistency right of this paint I think I went in too tentatively from the beginning and now I'm stuck in a stuck in a kind of rut of really light marks maybe for the next painting I'll try and go a bit bolder So anyway, today I wanted to talk a bit about um, finding balance in my work days. Uh, I think during this filling sketchbooks challenge, I've become more aware of how I operate throughout the day, um, the best times of day for me to be doing different things. Um, and from like being inside all day for a whole week, um, I really got a chance to see my routine and how I tick and um, what works and what doesn't. So I really want to work on um, just just nailing it down because I do have a somewhat of a routine, but I'm learning more and more about what what I like and what I don't like about it. So ideally, I would love to get up earlier, start getting up earlier on that week where Ozzy was up at five. 
Um, I wasn't getting up that early. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not a morning person. I need my sleep. But um, I would end up getting up at about seven. And that left me so much time to do things, especially in the winter when it's getting um, darker earlier. Having those extra hours in the morning was really, really helpful. So I would love to get back on that um, since Ozzy started getting up at his normal time again. I started getting up at my normal time again, which is around around nine. Um, but that means I'm not normally in here until t half ten, eleven-ish. So I want to see if I can get get back into a a morning groove. The only issue with that is that. I don't know, it really helps when Ozzy's doing it as well. Um, like, we don't spend the mornings together. We have a completely different morning routine, and that's good for me because I don't, I'm not, I just don't like people in the morning. Um, but it helps to both have that, like, we both need to get up out of bed, so we're in it together. But now that he's back on his normal work schedule, um, it wouldn't make sense for him to get up that early because he doesn't get home from work till 12 or 1 in the morning, so... It's just not, just not sustainable for him, um, and he needs a bit of a lion. But yeah, so I need to, I need to work on just doing it myself, um, being a bit more independent in that. Um, and then I want to spend some time in the morning journaling, which I've, I've done on and off, uh, but I would like to be a bit more consistent with it. And also art journaling, um, or at least sketchbooking. But yeah, I've really enjoyed. Um, journaling during that 30 ways to play sketchbook um endeavor so i want to find some more time for that in my mornings because i think that's a great way to jump start my creativity for the day um and then my usual work day would start hopefully around half 10 but i like to have a slow morning i like to really ease my way into it and i think that leaves me enough time to do the things i want to do live a little bit of life um without you know um what's the word obligations or anything else just kind of do my own thing for a bit and um yeah and then around half 10 check my emails and start doing work work um and then do my my 45 minute thing that has always worked 45 minute chunks of work is like a consistent thing for me that I know I can do I can focus um and I have an app called focus keeper uh, that's like a Pomodoro timer, but if you get the pro version, um, so the Pomodoro timer is 25 minutes on and a five minute break. Um, but if you get the pro version of this app, which is only one ninety nine, so I thought it's worth it, um, you can change the times. So I've changed that to 45 minutes of work and then um, 15 minute breaks. And if I can do like two or three cycles of that and then have my lunch and then carry on like that I found is a great way to work for me um the one thing that I really want to focus on is getting up and moving around during those 15 minutes that is really really important I don't know what <laughs> I don't know what's going on with me at the moment if it's like the time of year or I don't know if I feel like I'm aging or what but I'm really more aware of how my body feels and how desperately it's calling out for activity I'm really not an active person I never have been and it's something that I always kind of joked about but it's becoming more and more serious now like I'm really feeling it in my body like it's really calling out for movement and it's just not it's just not healthy to not move especially like I almost feel bad now I feel guilty because it's like I have a very capable body um and like there are so many people out there that don't and that would love to be able to do things that I could potentially do but I just don't like I just sit down all day um so yeah I feel like I need to find a way to move about during that time like at the moment what I normally do is some housework there's always something to do so I'll always get up and put a load of washing in or hang something up or just something um play with Thierry or something but um I'm hoping to put in more like yoga stretching just just bits and bobs I have no muscle whatsoever in my body and again that's something I used to joke about but it's not really funny anymore like the way my joints feel is not how a 26 year old woman's joints should feel like it's and it's kind of concerning I've already had a doctor tell me about five years ago now that I um have a very high like I, I very likely already have osteoarthritis in some of my joints and it's like 
you can work on that you know you can you can reverse that so rather than letting that carry on I really want to work on it but the issue is I hate exercise I hate it I really do I always have I think part of that is being a gifted and talented kid I am one of those children that was just not good at not being good at things so I've never I've never known how to not be able to do things and exercise is something obviously you have to work at and I'm not good at starting something seeing that I'm not good at it and having to carry on um but at this point it's like girl get your act together (laughs) we can't keep making excuses so I'm working a little bit a little bit at a time we'll see but that's like the main change I want to make in my daily routine get some movement in there I mean ideally I would be going outside but let's not (laughs) let's not ask too much of ourselves yet um if I can if I can walk up and down the stairs a bit or get on my exercise bike for 10 minutes like that's a start I think so yeah going into the new year I'm looking forward to getting more active and wish me luck guys because I don't know it shouldn't be that hard should it but I don't know I think if I take it a little bit at a time I should be able to do it um I don't really have a choice right don't let me um don't let me get away with not doing it I would love to know if you guys have the same kind of thing if anyone else out there just hates exercise if you found a thing that works for you I would love to know I just consistently over my whole life have not been able to do it um or like I'll have a I'll have a routine for a bit and then somehow end up just falling off but I'm hopeful I'm not (laughs) I'm not loving this painting guys but it'll be it'll be a good a good page filler at least um and I might carry on and do the other one later today um yeah turns out this was not it's just one of those days I think it's just one of those like um filler days things can't always go exactly to plan Right, I think my camera's about to cut out, so let's, as I was saying, you know, let's get up, have a stretch, have a little walk around, um, touch your toes or something, and I will see you in a second. All right, we are back on and popping. Um, I don't really know where we're going to go with this painting, um, because now I don't feel like I have time to switch to another one once this is done, so maybe I'll just keep trying to work at this. Maybe layer it, get that paint more opaque I really don't know what what's gotten into me like with the thickness of this paint it's like I've got no no confidence in like slapping it on so let's have a comment question I had a comment from Addy, Addy, who said, do you do many freelance commissions or illustrating for editorials and such? I remember in an older video, you broke down your streams of income and said your sponsorships were the top source at the moment. Um, And that still stands. Um, I don't do a lot of freelance work. Um, I don't do a lot of commissions. Um, And that's partly through choice, but partly because I don't get approached for a lot of that kind of stuff. Um... And I don't really feel ready to do that much of that sort of stuff yet. Like, um, because my art changes so much, uh, I don't want to be putting out a lot and saying, you know, this is me as an artist and then suddenly changing. So, yeah, uh, I would like to do some commission stuff in the future, maybe, but it's still not like my 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 goal, my thing. Um, I do like just working on my own projects and I don't know making little books and things like that that is if I could do that forever then that would be my thing um and then income wise yeah sponsorships are 100% um still the way that I earn um the bulk of my money like the, the most kind of consistent um income that I get um and I know I recently had like two sponsorships back to back, the Visco video and the Intel video. That wasn't intentional. Um, I really like to space out my sponsorships, but one video was 
running late and one they wanted to push earlier so that's how that ended up happening um but as always those were received really well so thank you guys so much um thanks for being patient uh i was um genuinely really happy with those videos i was um especially the visco video um i don't know it was something i was really proud of um and i kind of want to make more videos in that style uh and it was a lot of fun a lot of fun working with them uh but yeah that is still um like my biggest source of income like the biggest at once sort of income um and then i don't really know what comes second maybe maybe youtube i but it all i don't know having like a variety is really helpful um because it all adds up and ends up making something livable you know because I'm not going to do sponsorships every month um, and I'm not always going to have a great month in the shop so it's good to have all the different things and then I think if I spent less time on YouTube then I would have more time for commissions um, so it's just about kind of making the choice about which is more important for me um, and that isn't to say that that's what everyone else does um, that's just my way of working because I don't think I could focus on all of those things at once. I'm not, I'm not really sure what I'm doing here. I don't really know how I'm going to blend this um, without completely ruining it. Because um, it's kind of got like a pinky tone, but when I mix those colours, it ends up too green. I think this is just going to have to be one of those like, just go with it type paintings. It's sometimes hard to sharing this stuff on YouTube knowing that, I don't know, people can be, not mean, but, um, I suppose if, if you come here to see amazing pieces of art and <laughs> you end up seeing some stuff that's just like, it's almost like, why, why are you even posting that? Um, like this is the kind of video that I would think about scrapping, but I'm trying to get better at just, you know, being more accepting of the times that don't work out. It's not, it's not awful. I had a comment recently that was like, why don't you go into a different field if you hate your art so much, basically. And I mean, that is like, that almost helped me kind of feel more confident in my work because the thought of not doing this anymore was so ridiculous to me. Um, it's like encouraging to know that even when it's not going great, um, there's still nothing else that I would want to do. And also, I hope it doesn't come across that I hate my art, because I don't think I've ever said that. Like, I don't hate my art whatsoever. Um, and I'm grateful every day for the fact that I'm able to do this. And I also think it's fair to not be always satisfied with the work you're doing. I think it's normal to have doubts. Um, but yeah, I would never say that I hate my art. Right, let's get to the fun part of the discussion. This is always my favourite part to talk about. Um, so, working on, I've been working on, obviously, filling my unfinished sketchbooks, <laughs> which is taking up, you know, most of my time. I'm not really doing anything else creatively at the moment. Um, I did end up packaging the last of the Greenhouse Essentials books. Um, so thank you to everyone that ordered one. Um, they're now no longer for sale, but yeah, they were really popular and um, I think it was last time around that I was talking about 
like having doubts about um, whether people would like them when they actually got them. And um, the response has been really good and really encouraging. And I think it was just one of those moments. Um, in fact, someone left a comment that was really, really helpful. Uh, but I can't remember it now. Um, but yeah, I think it's like one of those natural moments of like imposter syndrome. Like, oh my God, people are going to get these and realize that I'm not as good as they think I am. But um, yeah, it was really nice. Loads of people messaged me afterwards saying that they got them and they were really happy. Um, and I'm really happy. I also had my own moment of like waiting for an artist I love to release something. Um, and it really put me in the shoes of the people that do that for me that like wait for the exact time I'm launching something. Cause I was on, um, Ruth Spear, um, September Wildflowers on Instagram is her name. Um, but I was on her Etsy store waiting for her latest release of like prints and notebooks and stickers and things. I was so excited. I had it in my calendar. I had an alarm for it on my phone. Um, and I did manage to snag a few treats for myself. Um, you have to check her out. I'm sure you have probably seen her work before. She's an incredible artist and just an amazing storyteller with her work. I love her style, just everything. She's an amazing person as well. She's just lovely. Um, and she puts so much work into what she does. Um, I have received her, in fact, she sent me her, um, I think it was an Inktober project. Was it? No, it can't have been. No, it wasn't an Inktober project. It was, anyway, she sent me um, one of her little booklet things that she made uh, a couple of years ago or a year or so ago and it honestly is just the most beautiful thing that I own it's everything I love in a book um, they were limited edition um, and the fact that she gifted one to me was just I mean I still can't go over it and it was a year or so ago um, but the the work she puts into everything the little details just everything um, her packaging You've got to check her out um, and follow her, her on Instagram because um, although a lot of the stuff that she released recently um, has sold out, she is always um, keeping people updated when she's restocking. And yeah, just, just go and show her some love. She's amazing. And she's just a really nice person as well. And let's see. So for what I've been reading, last time I talked about starting What It Means When a Man Falls From the Sky by Leslie Neka Arima, who um, is, a, I think, Nigerian-American author. Um, it's a collection of short stories that are kind of set in America, in Nigeria. Um, and they really range in different subject matter and um, different tones, but they all have this theme of womanhood and uh yeah I I was up and down with this book um there were some stories that I really really liked and really connected with there were some that I found I don't know went on a bit or some of them felt really similar um I really enjoyed the stories that were the the story the actual story what it means when a man falls from the sky which shows up towards the end of the book that really got me back into the book I loved that one um, it had more of a sci-fi feel to it um, and that was really interesting concept wise and I mean she has a great writing style it's just that some of the stories didn't do it for me I did like her kind of folky tales that were more I don't know like um, more traditional uh, the kind of stories that you can imagine being like passed down from one generation to another I think she's really good at that um, it was a more kind of everyday stories that I wasn't really into but in general I really liked it as a book um, and there are some stories in there that I would definitely read again some that I would not <laughs> some that made me want to put the book down and um I don't know, give it a break. Like, it took me a long time to read. For a collection of short stories, it took me a long time to read because I'd have one story that I loved and then I'd want to keep reading and then the next story would put me off again. But I would recommend it. I'm sure there's something in there for everyone um, because the stories are so varied and her writing style is really good. And then after that, I started reading Big Little Lies by Leanne Moriarty. I was looking for something a bit lighter, a bit more kind of sensational, if, if that's the right word. I was kind of looking for 
something a bit like Gone Girl, but a bit less serious. And that's exactly what I've got. And what I mean by something like Gone Girl is just like something a bit psychological, a bit um, mystery. I remember like Gone Girl is still one of my favorite books because it I read it like just as it had come out. So I didn't know the story. I didn't know what was going to happen. So it was one of the very few books I've read that really like shocked me. Um, and while this Big Little Lies didn't necessarily have the same depth to it, it was just what I was looking for in having a bit of, it's kind of almost tongue in cheek. Like it's almost making, not making fun of itself, but making fun of the characters a little bit, especially at the beginning. Um, there's a lot of humor in there, but at the same time, um, it tackles some serious uh, things. I just realized I didn't talk about what it's about at all. So it's about um, this group of women, this group of mums whose children are all in the same kindergarten class. Um, and it's the start of the year. And basically the book starts with one of the parents being murdered at a trivia night. And then you go back in time to the start of that school year and you're sort of retracing the steps and trying to figure out how, how it led to that. Um, and there's somewhat of a mystery surrounding who it is that died and how, um, and you're almost following like this, a murder investigation. And so you're trying to figure out what's going on, what happened. And, and all the while you're getting to know these people. Um, I, I don't know. I, I, I did really like it. Uh, um, and I would definitely recommend it. I thought the character work was really good. Um, I really felt for some of the characters. Um, and it, yeah, as I said, it tackled some serious topics, but without being too heavy, I don't think. Um, and it was a fun read. It was an interesting read. I think towards the end, I was kind of getting over it. Um, and it was, it was around a three, 3.5 out of five for me at that point. Um, and then I was kind of so fixated on... Because you kind of, <laughs> I don't want to spoil it, um, but basically while you're thinking about who, who's who been murdered and who murdered them, I thought, you know, I've got it figured out. So that, I, I had it in my mind. I was like, yeah, I know what's going on. And I felt really smug and clever because I was like, yeah, leading into the end thinking, I know, I know exactly what's going on. And then you get thrown this other curveball that I really wasn't expecting and that that pleased me, that impressed me. I like a book that surprises me. And I think if I hadn't been so caught up in being smug about um, figuring out what was going on, then I probably, I possibly would have seen that other thing coming. But um, yeah, it, it led me, it led me down a road and I liked that. So I would, I would, I would read that again, probably actually. Um, not yet, obviously, but uh, yeah, I really liked that one. Um, I also, uh, I don't know if this counts as something I was reading, but someone recommended the Creative Pep Talk podcast last time around, um, a specific episode about finding your style. So I gave that a listen and I'm going to leave that linked below just in case anyone um, is having issues like with figuring out their art style. I found it, I'm not really a podcast person anymore. I um, don't know why, it just doesn't really do it for me anymore, but it was a nice, nice thing to listen to and uh, a great perspective on art style um so yeah i'll leave that link below if anyone wants to give that a listen and then i'm also listening to the audiobook of eat pray love by elizabeth gilbert um so big big magic i almost forgot the name of it then big magic by elizabeth gilbert which is a book about um like embracing your creativity um is the first audiobook i've ever listened to and been able to get through in full uh, just because Elizabeth Gil, I mean, it's a fantastic book anyway, and it's so cre it's so useful for creative people. But Elizabeth Gilbert herself is such an amazing author and narrator of her own work. Like she's so captivating, so funny, so interesting. So I knew after that that I had to listen to her narrate another book. So Eat, Pray, Love was the one that I went for. I had heard of Eat, Pray, Love um, because of the film and. I'd never been interested in reading it because, <sighs> how do I say this without being offensive? I thought it was going to be, you know, one of those typical, like, white woman finds herself in India type stories. Um, and it kind of is a bit of that, but 
I love Elizabeth Gilbert and I found her writing style really interesting. There is a bit of like, oh, <laughs> these exotic Indian people. And I don't know. I mean, it's not, it's not that bad. Um, but, you know, it's like this wise, this wise Indian man that reminds me of Yoda and these <sighs> ultra charming Italian people. Um, but yeah, it's not, it's nothing... Um, awful like it's not horrible to read at all and I just I love her personality and I think the one thing also you have to understand like this was written in 2006 which I suppose isn't that long ago but I don't know the tone of things was a bit different like people are a lot more careful about what they say so there is one point where she says she describes herself as worrying about like being schizo and that like oh put my back up a bit but then you have to remember that that was that was a lot that was like over 10 years ago when the conversation about mental health wasn't as out there as it is now and I mean schizophrenia is still something that's hugely stigmatized but there are a lot more voices being heard from within that space there's actually a channel on YouTube um called living with schizophrenia that I would really recommend checking out because you really get to know more about more about it and um yeah so I think the term schizo still has like just connotations around it um so hearing that was a bit of a yikes but you have to put it in context and understand that there's there was no mean for like being harmful around that and again the context of the time the time that this was written um yeah I mean I can understand it completely because I don't know when you're now things are a lot more like woke because people have the internet and social media but there was a time where people really didn't know so much about different groups of people and you just know what you know and you don't know sometimes that the words you're using have stigma and harmful um i don't know harmful results just just as words but anyway back to the book sorry that was major tangent um i'm enjoying it so far um I'm, i don't I just love I just love Elizabeth Gilbert so I love the book but it's not like it's not going to change my life it's not big magic if you could choose between the two I would definitely read big magic and I would definitely listen to it on audiobook rather than reading it reading it um because she's just just an amazing woman and then like at one point she said she's a cancer and I was like oh my god me too like I don't know I love her I'm obsessed with her um and so I'm in the middle of that right now I'm probably like 20% of the way through and I'm also currently reading Misery by Stephen King which I started a couple of days ago it's the first King novel I've actually ever read um so I thought I should give him a go because I like his stories I like the films of his stories um I was just worried that I wouldn't connect with his writing style because I've heard that his books can be a bit hit or miss and I thought Misery would be the one that I'm most likely to enjoy because I've just heard from what I've heard of it it sounds more like something I would read and yeah I'm really really liking it I'm really surprised um I'm probably about a third of the way in um and it's been a a quick read which surprised me I thought it was going to take ages but um yeah something about his writing style the story um Misery is about an author who um is in a car accident and he's rescued by his number one fan um who ends up essentially keeping him hostage and it's really gruesome (laughs) um it's really creepy um quite graphic I suppose but I I think I said this last time I'm not I'm not sure what counts as graphic one one description so far has kind of made me cringe like anything to do with bones really (laughs) I, I can I can deal with blood and guts, but anything to do with bones is just oh, 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 God, I can't. Um, but yeah, I'm I am I'm really liking it so far. It's the kind of book that like I normally just read in the morning um, with my coffee, and then I get on with my day. But that's the kind of book that I would like to pick up throughout the day and just keep reading and find out what happens. And um, I think I've heard that it slows down a bit in the middle, um, so we'll see. But for now, I'm really liking it. And then, so that's all I've been reading. And then for what I've been watching, uh, not much at all, really. I haven't had a lot of time to watch things. I started watching um, 
In fact, last time I didn't get to mention one other film that I had watched, which was called Open Grave. I think it was on Netflix. It's about these, like, this guy wakes up in a pit full of dead bodies and he doesn't know who he is or where he is or what's going on. And then he finds this house full of other people that don't know what's going on. And they're all trying to figure each other out and what the situation is. And there are kind of like zombie-ish people around and they're kind of gradually getting their memory back and figuring out what's been going on and why they're there. Um, it was okay. <laughs> it was, it was, uh, it was a decent use of my time at the time. Um, and then I started watching The Great Gatsby, which I don't, I don't I, I've not read the book. I don't really know the story. Um, but yeah, just on a whim, I thought, yeah, I'll watch The Great Gatsby and I'm really liking it so far. I'm only halfway in I think it's a couple of hours long but I was watching it and then see, I never watch films with Ozzy because he's really picky about watching films it's got to be like the best film ever he's got to know that he's going to like it or he doesn't want to commit time to it where I'm the complete opposite I will watch anything I kind of prefer a rubbish film um like it, I find it easier to watch a rubbish film than a good one whereas he it has to it has to be good for him to watch it so I don't, like, my time watching films is a little a little break. It's something that I do when Ozzy's not around. Um, but he got home from work while I was watching The Great Gatsby. And I can tell you now, if, if he had been home and I said, let's watch The Great Gatsby, he would have said no. But because he came in halfway through and saw, I don't know, saw a little bit of it. In fact, it, he didn't even see any of it because the TV was paused. But then he said, oh, I want to watch this. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm halfway through. I'm going to have to watch the start of it again but we need to find the time to watch it together and I doubt that's going to happen. So I'm probably just going to finish it. Like, <laughs> I'm just going to watch it on my own. And if he wants to watch it, he can watch it another time. Uh, we did end up watching Between Two Ferns together just because I don't know, I had to convince him to watch something. I used to love the series Between Two Ferns. Yeah, the online series of it. Um, it's like a fake chat show with Zach Galifianakis as the host and he gets some good people on there. Um, but yeah, it's a funny, if you like Will Ferrell and those types of films, then you'll really like it. And I would recommend checking the series out if you haven't watched it, because I was always a big fan of Between Two Ferns, the show, and a lot of the funny or die stuff back in the day. Um, oh, that boat turned out quite well. <laughs> I went into a bit of a meditation state then. Um, so... Yeah, that film was it was it was okay. It's nice to see the cameos, um, which was always the best thing about the show between two ferns. It's really funny to see actors um, just trying not to laugh <laughs> while they're in these weird fake interviews. Um, and so I think that's the only film I've watched this month. Um, other than that, I have been watching a little bit of I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, kind of over it. I mean, I've watched it for years and years and years, but it's just the same as always. Ozzy really wanted to watch it this year. Um, he never was into it before, but um, Ian Wright's on it this year and he loves Ian Wright. But even even Ian Wright, it's like, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not interested. I love Ant and Dec and I love to see them together. Uh, so I'm, I'm dipping in and out, but yeah, it's not really doing it for me this year. And I've also been watching a bit of MasterChef The Professionals. Um, I just really like seeing nice food. And it's always great to watch with Ozzy because then he gets inspired to make something. So he'll make something. He'll make us an amazing dinner the next day. Um, let's see what else. I found a YouTube channel, a booktube channel that I really like called The Novel Lush. Um, and this I think is her name Lauren I think her name's Lauren but she doesn't read any of the types of books that I read she likes kind of romances I think para romance it might be called like paranormal and oh I mean I, I'm sure I've mentioned it in fact I think I mentioned it last time I really don't like vampire stories I just it's just not my thing at all um and I don't think I've, I've never read a uh, romance so um, it could be my kind of thing but even though the books she talks about aren't books I'm interested in. She, as a person, is really interesting. Um, so yeah, I just, <laughs> I've just ended up really enjoying her channel, just going through the backlog of her content. She moved recently to Germany, I think, so she hasn't been uploading a lot. But yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what else she has in store. Um, and then I also found this channel called Northern Heart on YouTube. Um, and I haven't watched a lot of their videos, but they're like 
in Sweden, no Sweden, Norway. <laughs> I don't know. They're in like this really nice remote area, uh, just really nice aesthetic videos and just a calm, minimal lifestyle. So if you want like a calming bit of content to watch, then I would really recommend it. And the final thing, I'm rushing now because I want to have time to mention, um, it's also appeal time. Um, I wanted to have time to mention another channel um, in fact, a, a really important video, I think, for artists, and I think the video is called Artists on Instagram. Um, it's by Ergo Josh, who's a great um, artist. Uh, he's on Instagram and YouTube, and I'm sure everywhere else, and I'll have links for him below. But he made this video that's about um, social media and artists and the pressure we put on ourselves and um, just the focus on likes and engagement. Um, so it's just a really important video to watch if you, as we all do, um, get caught up in worrying about Instagram and about um, the art you're making being seen. Um, and he was inspired to make that video uh, by another artist who made a similar video around artist on Instagram. Um, and they were talking about art, making art that builds an audience, I think was the name of that video. And it's about like feeling like you need to stick with what works. Um, and I actually had this recently because the last speed paint that I did did really well, um, both here and on Instagram. And you immediately think, OK, I need to do more of that. Um, and you don't know. You know, I don't know if that's what I want to do or if that's just something that I know works. And so I'm going to stick with it. Um, so it's a really, really useful video for trying to figure out like what where your priorities are and um, knowing that there's no long term gain from just doing what other people like um you're not building an authentic audience there uh but yeah <laughs> those videos i will leave linked below they're really worth checking out um i haven't even taken a moment to stop and look at what i painted uh it's not it's not too bad i don't mind it um it's a nice kind of peaceful thing it's the technique isn't there but um the colors are so i'm happy with that and we'll just leave it there so yeah thank you so much for spending this time with me i hope you're having a great day and i will see you soon for the next video bye